Hey there, and welcome to Tim Talks Cooking. Glad you could join us today. It's breakfast at the Tim Talks Studios, and let me tell you what, we are talking, are you ready for this? We are talking keto peanut butter waffles. You got that right. Let's get started. I'm making a really big batch of these today. This should make uh, between eight and ten uh, nice sized waffles. Each one is a single serving and they're kind of high in calories but of course very low in carbs and these are so delicious you're just not going to believe it's diet food as always with the recipes I promote on this channel. Anyway check it out. Here's what you're going to need to make it. First of all you're going to start off with one and a quarter cups of natural peanut butter. This is smooth peanut butter. I guess you could use crunchy if you want. I think smooth works best here and you want to choose a peanut butter that is just peanuts and salt and, or just peanuts and no salt if you like it that way but um, no other stuff in it so make sure you choose a natural peanut butter. You're also going to need three quarters of a cup of softened cream cheese. You're going to need five tablespoons of softened unsalted butter, two teaspoons of baking powder, three quarters of a cup of heavy whipping cream and eight whole eggs. I'm going to use my food processor to mix up all the ingredients here. Of course, you could use a handheld mixer or a stand mixer if you like. Take your choice, right? It really doesn't make any difference at all. Here I've already put the peanut butter in the bowl of the mixer and I'm just going to put in the uh, softened butter and the cream cheese and give it a whirl. Get that incorporated together well before we add the other ingredients. Let's get the lid on there. Give her a whirl. There we go. Just gonna let that go. Of course, there's no gluten or anything here, so we can't overwork the dough. Right now, just peanut butter and uh, butter and cream cheese. Let that get worked in there. A couple of bursts with the pulse. Give it a scrape. And even though you can see it's not some of the cream cheese and stuff isn't completely blended in yet, that's okay, because we're not done yet. Wipe off as much of that as I can. Okay, next I'm gonna add my baking powder. Make sure we get all of it in there. My cup had a little moisture in the bottom, apparently. Here we've got our three quarters of a cup of heavy whipping cream. That goes right on in there. Give that a bit of a whirl. Okay, that looks pretty good. Again, we're going to give it another scrape. We want this to be blended smoothly. Look at them, that beautiful already. <laughs> I love the color of this. Now we're going to add our eggs. I'm going to do this just one or two at a time. I don't think we have to be too delicate with it, like with most of the recipes you're going to find here on my channel. Make sure we get it all in there though. Now while I'm doing this, I might add, I've got my waffle iron heating up here. We want it to be really hot when we get done so we uh, can bake these off right away. And I've got it on the highest setting, by the way. Okay, now I'm going to add the rest of the eggs. Now I've incorporated all of the eggs and let's see how we've done. Look at that. <laughs> that is a beautiful waffle batter and we're ready to get to the waffle iron. Let's go. The little beef has just gone off to tell me that this is hot enough to get started here. So I'm going to brush this with some ghee. You can use whatever oil you could spray canola oil on this or use whatever oil you like to do. Coconut oil would be great. Anyway, there we go. By the way, the ghee, there is a recipe on my channel, so check that out. Really easy to make. Okay, so what we've ended up with here is five cups of this batter. I think we're going to get ten really nice sized waffles out of this. And I'm actually going to measure them pretty carefully so we do that. That's the sound of my beaver telling me it's ready to go. I'm going to put a half a cup of batter in here. And as you know, usually I eyeball everything. This time I'm not going to do that because I want them to, I want to have, want to end up with 10 nice ones. 
See, there we go. Batter's pretty thin. Don't let it disconcert you. Just close your waffle iron and wait for it to do all the work. And when it beeps, we'll pull it out of there. Now, while your waffle is cooking, don't give in to the temptation to lift the lid until that beeper goes off or whatever signal it is that tells you that you've uh, come back up to temperature. Um, you want to let that go until it's done. Don't mess with it. Okay, and now our waffle's done, and I'm going to pull this out of here and put it on a wire rack to cool. I'll do that with the rest of them, too. Okay, my beeper's just gone off here, and these are ready to take up. This is my very last one. As it turns out, I got 12 really very nice sized waffles out of this. Just lovely. And so here are all the waffles that that batter produced. Uh, let me just show you a close-up here of one of the squares of a waffle. Now, one waffle is a serving. They're very high in calories. It's about 350 calories each, so you don't want to eat a stack of them. But uh, cut into quarters like this, you can use them as bread, and there are all kinds of things you can make with these. And um, we'll save that for another video. In fact, um, I'm not even going to do a taste test right here because uh, while I was cooking these in the waffle iron, I had to have one. So you can see a picture of that in the thumbnail for this video. And there you have it. Keto peanut butter waffles. These are really wonderful. And again, if I didn't think so, I wouldn't make a big old stack like this. I'm going to seal these up in some Ziploc bags, put them in my freezer. Um, you can also uh, vacuum seal them, but in my house, there's no need to do that because this, these will never last long enough to make that worthwhile. Anyway, thanks for joining us here today on Tim Talks Cooking. Really appreciate it. Before you leave, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And if you don't mind, also the little bell symbol so you get notifications whenever I release a new video, which is usually a couple of times a week. Anyway, listen, it's been great to see you here today, and we'll catch you next time at Tim Talks Cooking. Bye for now.